<sighs> there are times in every young 30 year old tech reviewer's life when they have to admit that they were wrong. And this is one of those times because I was very wrong in my review of AMD's last gen hero, the 5800X3D. As it turns out, the chip had a lot more under the hood than I originally gave it credit for. Like, way more. Like, enough to warrant this entire video dedicated to correcting the record and showing what this beast of a gaming CPU is really capable of. And wow, this thing's good. Oh, um, I'll also be talking about bottlenecks that led me to this point just so that you can avoid the same mistakes I made. And speaking of mistakes, it would be a mistake for me not to talk about today's video sponsor, PC Builder, since if I don't, they won't pay me. PC Builder is a service currently available at Computer Mania here in South Africa that makes buying or building an awesome gaming system an absolute breeze. Just choose the games you want to play, pick a budget that doesn't make your wallet cry, and PC Builder does the rest. PC Builder will tell you how many juicy frames you'll be able to get out of your new system at various resolutions and settings, and it helps you customize the build as much as you want. See a part or a peripheral you like better? Grab it and PC Builder will update everything accordingly. Simple as that. PC Builder will also keep track of stuff like compatibility and power requirements for you, so if you accidentally switch out to a part that won't work with the rest of your system, PC Builder will let you know and give you a list of other parts that will. PC Builder on Computer Mania will build the system, install Windows along with a free month of Xbox Game Pass for you, and test and benchmark it to make sure that it's ready to game as soon as you get your hands on it. All of their builds come standard with a two-year warranty, almost double compared to the competition, and each part in the system is also still covered by their manufacturer warranties. Warrantyception! <laughs> Check out the PC Builder tool at Computer Mania right now using the link in the description, or if you want to pick up any of the parts being mentioned in this video, or anything else for that matter, grab it all at Take Lot, also link down below the like button. Now, in the conclusion of my original review for the 5800X3D, when it came time for a recommendation of whether I think it's actually worth picking up or not, I said, well, not really. In hindsight, definitely not my best call, but it was based on a couple of valid and not so valid reasons. First of all, the chip was selling for around $440 or 8,300 Rand here in South Africa at the time, which was more than a little ridiculous. And even knowing what I know now, I still stand by that point. I mean, the thing was priced even higher than the 5900X at the time, which put it well out of reach of us who'd benefit most from upgrading to it. But hey, I could only work with the pricing I had available at the time. And thankfully, things have changed a lot since then. Now the 5800X3D can be had for around $320 or 7,500 Rand here in South Africa, and it's even been spotted selling for as low as $310, which is much more reasonable considering the performance you'll be getting out of it, which we'll get to in just a bit. Another reason for my decision not to recommend the 5800X3D was that the AIM4 platform had reached a dead end after many years of faithful service, while AIM5 and AMD's next, now current gen, was right around the corner which seemed like a pretty fair point at the time. After all, locking yourself onto a dead platform just weeks before the launch of a brand new one didn't make a ton of sense to me at the time. But now that we're right in the middle of said new platform along with its pricey motherboards, pricey DDR5, and somewhat pricey new 7000 series chips, sticking to what we had has been making a lot more sense. I mentioned as much in my OG review, but it's a heck of a lot truer now than it was back then. If you already have a decent AM4 motherboard and want to upgrade from your first, second, third, or even another fourth gen Ryzen chip, the 5800X3D will be a cheap, completely worthwhile upgrade to you. And even if you're building an entirely new system from scratch and don't really plan to upgrade again anytime soon, the value of the AM4 platform and the gaming performance on offer by the X3D would be dumb to ignore. Which is in an indirect way what I did, and yes, I'm dumb. Now. Those two points were ones that made sense to me at the time, but don't really hold water anymore since a lot has changed since then. That's always going to happen with reviews since I can only work with the information that I have at the time. But what if the information I had at the time was fundamentally flawed? Well, that's what this video is all about, baby. The third and most important reason for me not recommending the X3D in my original review was the somewhat underwhelming performance I was getting out of it. Underwhelming, as I discovered, not because the chip just wasn't all that good, but because I screwed up. I've been testing and reviewing CPUs for many years now, even before I started this channel, and I've always tried to make sure that I present the most accurate numbers as possible using the best gear I have available. 
The gear in question for that review included an RTX 3070 since that's the best GPU I had on hand. Now, I knew that even at 1080p, the 3070 might be a bit of a bottleneck for higher end CPUs. So in some of the benchmarks, I lowered in-game settings to a level where I thought I'd be placing the bulk of the workload on the CPU rather than the GPU as you're supposed to do when reviewing a CPU. But uh, nope, not me, in no way did I mitigate it enough. In later CPU reviews, I was able to use an RX 6900 XC and I redoubled my efforts to ensure that I had appropriate in-game settings applied. And that's when I started to see the error of my ways. And a couple of you helpfully, some using more colorful language than others, actually tried to point this out to me, but I fell into the trap of being overconfident in my own testing methodology and I ignorantly wrote those off. Big yikes. Anyway, after all of that, all of a sudden the X3D wasn't so underwhelming anymore. Competing with and even beating the 7900X and Intel's 13600 and 13900K in more than a handful of games. Check out my reviews of those if you want to see the full numbers. But even more than that, unlike in my OG review, the X3D didn't just somewhat outpace the 3800XC and barely the 5800X, it thrashed them. Now, as we get into the charts, don't focus too much on the FPS numbers themselves since they're not directly comparable due to the change in GPU and game settings. Just focus on the difference between the X3D's FPS numbers compared to the competition and strap in for the ride. So let's take a closer look. First, here's Cyberpunk and the results I got in my original review. And looking at it now, I have no idea how I didn't see the clear bottleneck at play here. I mean, there was less than a 2% difference between all three chips, and coming as a surprise to just me apparently, when we switch over to the updated, corrected results, uh, yeah, I have no words. Instead of all three falling within almost margin of error territory of each other, the 5800X3D comes out ahead of the 5800X by 22% and beats the 3800XC by a whopping 43%. Wait, whoa, whoa, did I say whopping? We haven't seen anything yet. In the original results for God of War, all three chips landed within about 5% of each other, which isn't much, but at least there's some believable -ish scaling there. But when we switch to the updated numbers, yeah, I should have never uh, settled for believable-ish scaling. Here, the 5800X3D absolutely dominated its older competition, coming in at 36% faster than the 5800X and a friggin' 54% faster than the 3800XC. Youch. Borderlands 3 was another total blowout, with the old numbers pointing to the X3D only beating the other chips by as much as 4.6%. Sus much? Yeah. Meanwhile, after I removed the X3D's reins, it actually shot ahead of the 5800X by 20%, and left the 3800XC in the dust by a 62% margin. Hitman 3 and Shadow of the Tomb Raider were interesting cases where both actually showed some really decent scaling in the original results, but only when it came to the 3800XC, where the X3D outpaced it by 20 to 29%. But when it came to the two 5800 chips, it should have been clear that they were hitting a wall that definitely shouldn't have been there, with the X3D only barely managing a 2 to 3% win over the 5800X. That's something we definitely don't see playing out again in the updated results. After the retest, the X3D finally broke free and massively widened its lead over the competition in Hitman 3, coming in at 25% faster than the 5800X and 70% faster than 3800XC. And the same goes for Tomb Raider, where it ran 18% faster than the 5800X and 50% faster than the poor third gen part. Of course, not all the games I retested produced outrageous numbers like the ones we've just seen. Some showed about the same measurable scaling in the updated tests as they did in the original tests, likely meaning the first results were pretty valid already, while games like Horizon Zero Dawn and a few others didn't scale quite as dramatically with CPU performance. So the retests didn't deliver the same show-stopping numbers. But even then, taking Horizon Zero Dawn as an example, the original results still had the X3D only managing a 1-3% lead over the competition, which was boosted all the way up to a 10 to 18% lead in the updated benchmarks, which in my and anyone else's books is still a hell of a lot. Now, along with pulling my pants down and revealing my shame to every single person watching this video, I think these numbers show just how important it is to know where the bottlenecks in your system really are and to act and buy accordingly. AMD's 5800X3D is one of the best CPUs you can buy for gaming right now, and at its current price, it also genuinely presents a fantastic value, all things considered. 
I wholeheartedly recommend upgrading to it or choosing it as the heart of your new system if you're not too bothered about future upgradability and newer features like BDR5 or faster SSD support. But if you do decide to pick it up, it would probably be a good idea to keep the numbers we just looked at in mind. If your main focus is gaming and you want to get the most out of this monster of a chip, ideally you'd want to pair it with an equally balls to the walls graphics card since the CPU can only give you as many sexy frames per second as your GPU will allow. That doesn't mean you shouldn't buy it if you have a more reasonable GPU like the 3070 or lower, it just means that your gaming performance will ultimately be limited by the performance of your graphics card, for the most part anyway. And honestly, a GPU bottleneck is kind of what you should be aiming for. Popping a shiny new GPU into your system sometime down the line is a much faster, easier, more meaningful for gaming, and sometimes even cheaper option than grabbing a top tier graphics card and then having to replace your entire system to keep up with it afterward. It's all about the balance, bro. Unfortunately for reviewers, balance isn't something we look for when reviewing hardware. In order to properly show the best case scenario performance of a single part like the 5800X 3D, for example, you need the rest of the system to be basically God tier to ensure that you're not inadvertently testing the wrong part. And if that's not possible, like with this channel, which is too small for the big boys to justify sending me their God tier stuff for keeps, then we need to pay extra special attention to stuff like in-game settings to get at least as close to the same results as possible. I failed to do that in my original X3D review and presented technically correct but unintentionally misleading numbers and I didn't listen to the voices of reason coming from this awesome community. And for that, I can only apologize and hope that this video goes some way towards making things right, and I promise to keep doing better like I feel I have been doing in my more recent CPU reviews. So, thanks to everyone for watching, and thanks to all the commenters who keep me on my toes and help me improve this channel. Remember to check out the PC Builder tool at Computer Mania using the link in the description, or if you want to pick up any of the parts in this video or literally anything else, do it at Take a Lot, also linked down below. And yeah, uh, I'll catch you all in the next one. Cheers.